back, Kingfish. Hi, Indian. Say, Kingfish, uh, you really look like you got trouble. What's the matter? Well, Andy, in three days I'll be married 25 years. Well, that ain't nothing to be sad about. Think of the fellas that's only been married five years and still got 20 to go. Oh, Andy, it ain't nothing like that. The whole thing is my own doing. Because, see, Andy, the trouble that I have in all started when me and Sapphire got married and went to Niagara Falls on our honeymoon. Oh, George, what a wonderful honeymoon. This has been the happiest week of my life. Sapphire, my darling, I know our love gonna last as long as that water comes slopping over them falls. George, promise me one thing. Yes, my darling, anything. Promise you bring me back here again on our 25th wedding anniversary. Honey, I promise. And that's when the thing started, Andy. When I made that promise. Oh, what you mean by that, Kingfish? Well, I didn't give the thing another thought. Until three years ago, on our 22nd anniversary, I was sitting in the apartment one night when Sapphire come in with a big package under her arm. Oh, no, George, no. George, look what I just bought. Oh, a statue. Uh, what one of your relatives is that? <laughs> George, you and I are going to start saving, and we're going to start right now. Now, how much change have you got in your pocket? Well, uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, counting the silver and everything, uh, 18 cents. But where's the piggy bank, George? No, I can't, honey, because I uh, got an insurance premium coming up here. Put it in the piggy bank, I said, George. Now, I've got a dollar and thirty cents. I'm going to put that in, too. Yeah, uh, what happens now? Why, George, don't you realize you've already saved a dollar and forty-eight cents? Well, that's fine, all right. Well, let's open up the bank and split it. George, put that matter down. We're not going to open that until we save for three years. And every day, we're going to put our loose change in the piggy bank. Now, wait a second. What are we saving all this money for anyway? Now, I don't mind scrimping as long as I know what the scrimp is for. Well, sit down, George, and I'll tell you. George, do you remember when we came back off our honeymoon? I said after we'd been married 25 years, I wanted to go back to Niagara Falls for a second honeymoon. Hmm, I think I do remember you saying something like that. Well, our 25th anniversary will be in three years, George. And if we start saving now, we'll be able to make the trip to Niagara Falls again. But, honey, that's going to cost a whole... George, I've been dreaming about this for so long. Please say you'll do it. Okay, honey. If that's what you want. <laughs> oh, George, I'm so happy. I'll go fix supper now. And this all happened three years ago, huh, Kingfish? Yeah, and even Sapphire I've been putting money in the thing ever since. Of course, I give us a little in, too. Yeah, then you and Sapphire ought to be going on this trip pretty soon. That is, if you ain't done hit the pig with the mallet yet. Oh, no, Andy. Many a time in the last couple of years, Sapphire told me that she'd really leave me if I messed with that pig. So I ain't took nothing. Yeah, that's good, all right. But, Andy, let me tell you what happened. Well, one day, after we'd been saving for about two years, I turned the pig over to get the manufacturer's name off of the bottom of the pig. Yeah. Well, while I was moving the pig around, uh, trying to get a focus on the name, 48 cents fell out. Yeah, that could happen, all right. Yeah, and anyway, a few months later, I got to wondering what the patent number was uh, on the bottom of the pig. <laughs> well, I picked the pig up, and then I turned him over, and there were the little teeny weeny numbers. Well, I didn't have my glasses with me, 
So while I was shaking, the pigeons to focus. Uh, how much did you focus out? Uh, 75 cents. And then the accident really commenced to happen. Well, I was sitting there one day, and I picked up the pig, and I turned it over. I wanted to see how his little stomach looked. Dollar and a quarter. Twenty-five cent piece and a dollar bill. A dollar bill fell out of that small hole? Well, Andy, I was putting on my button shoes at the time, and I just happened to have the button hook in my hand. <laughs> well, anyway, between uh, looking at the patent numbers and uh, buttoning up my shoes and focusing, there ain't no money in the bank. Well, at least you didn't take nothing out. Oh, no, Andy, uh, not a dime. It just fell out. But the thing I don't understand, King is uh, if all the money is out of the pig, how come Sapphire don't know it's empty? You keeps it right there in the living room, don't you? Well, Andy, every time some money fell out by accident, I always put in a little something to make up for the weight. Oh, I see. Yeah, but Andy, in three days, when the festivities start, little do Sapphire know that our pig gonna have a little of lead washers. Well, King Fish, at least you got three days to figure something out in. Yeah, Andy. But I don't know what I'm going to do. I've been pacing up and down here all morning. I've gone crazy. You know one thing, Kingfish? You wouldn't be in this whole mess if you hadn't gone to Niagara Falls 25 years ago. You're right, Andy. But I enjoyed the trip and everything about it. The beautiful falls. The maid or the mist. And we even seen a man go over the falls in a barrel. You did, huh? Yeah, and if I'd have known the fix I was going to be in today, I'd have gone over with him. <laughs> oh, I tell you, George, I've been making plans for our second honeymoon all day long, and I'm so excited I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's going to be a wonderful trip for both of you. George, you really must be excited. I never was so excited in my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> and to think we owe it all to this little piggy. George, I owe you an apology. You know when Sapphire first told me three years ago that she's going to start stuffing that pig with money? I predicted that with you around, that pig was going to lead a very short life. <laughs> but George, <laughs> you have really stuck to your bargain. <laughs> you know, folks, I've got an idea. I bet it's the same one I got. Let's open up the pig and count the money now. No, no, no. Don't nobody lay a hand on him. We got a ironclad agreement that we ain't going to open this pig until our 25th anniversary. And we got three days to go. Well, all right, George. Don't get excited. We'll wait for three days. George has always been so sentimental. Come on, Mama, let's get started with the dishes. <laughs> Well, you was better off than I is. At least it ain't gonna hurt you when they start breaking you apart. Three hundred dollars. Andy, I don't know what I'm gonna do. When Sapphire opened that bank, it's gonna be the end of everything. Yeah, that's pretty serious, all right. Yeah, and Andy, who would have thought that a little thing like a piggy bank could cause all this trouble? Well, you know, like you say, Kingfish, he who pays the piper has got to eat his own pipe or something. <laughs> oh, I know. That's all right. <laughs> it's too bad you can't wave a magic wand and make the thing disappear. Then you'd never have to open it. Oh, I know, but... Disappear. Andy, you just said something that gave me the solution to the whole thing. I did, huh? Oh, yeah, I was on my toes, all right. <laughs> What'd I say? Well, Andy, suppose I was to take the women out of the house, and then you come up and took the bank and brought it back here to the lodge hole and hid it in the cellar. And then when we come home, they'd think the bank was stolen and there wouldn't be no blame on me. Yeah, Sapphire would be disappointed, but at least she wouldn't lose no faith in you. And that's the only reason I do this for you, Kingfish. All right, Andy. I'll take the women to a movie tonight, and I'll leave the back door open. And after we are gone, why, you sneak in and get the bank and bring it back here and hide it. Okay, Kingfish. Boy, you sure is lucky I took this thing. <laughs> Turn around a little bit, honey. That's it. That's it. Well, what's going on here? 
I'm getting my trip so ready for my second honeymoon. Well, that's right. We've got to get everything together, all right. Yes, George, you better get your clothes ready, too. We haven't got much time, you know. Oh, no, my thing's in pretty good shape, but I've just been studying here. We all excited about the trip and everything. Suppose we all go to a movie tonight and unlax. Oh, George, I don't think we have time. We've got just too much to do. Don't you think so, Mama? Well, it's up to you, Santa. Oh, come on. A couple hours in the movie will uh, do us a lot of good. Well, all right. Well, we we'll see what's clean around here. Uh, down on the corner, they got what sound like a good picture. The badge of bravery. I saw that, George. Well, let's see what down at 134th Street. Oh, this sounds like a beauty. Love in the foothills. I feel that. Well, let's see what else is here. Oh, well, how about uh, Moon Over Tulsa? Anybody seen that? I ain't seen it. I didn't either. Well, then we'll go right after dinner. Where's it playing, George? At the Bijou. Well, that's out. I don't like the popcorn they got down there. Well, do you like the popcorn at the Tivoli? Yes, but they don't give you as much butter there as they do at the Strand. Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to get the popcorn at the Tivoli, butter up at the Strand, and end up at the Bijou with Moon Over Tulsa. Well, that settles it then. I'll get dinner ready so we can get an early start. Come on, help me, George. I 
shaking like a leaf. Say, if I'm going to open the thing tomorrow, I can't stall her no more. Yeah. What time tomorrow, Kingfish? Well, Andy, the way I figured it, Sapp and her mama start digging in the pig around 7 o'clock tomorrow night after supper. At 7-2, they ought to strike lead. And at 7-3, hostilities ought to be blazing on all fronts. So you kind of going to throw in the sponge on the whole thing, huh, Kingfish? Oh, no, Andy. I've been doing a lot of thinking. i got one ace in the hole. I'm going to try and raise a $300 within the next 24 hours. You is, huh? Yeah, Andy. I've been working on two or three money-making schemes, and I only hope one of them click. That's all. That's my only hope. Now, wait a minute, Kingfish. There ain't none of the crazy schemes you usually think of, is it? Oh, no, Andy. This is the type of thing that any conservative businessman in my position would do. Come on, Andy. You might be some help. Yeah. Just a place, Andy. Uh, let's go in. Yeah. What can I do for you, gentlemen? Well, I want three hundred dollars worth of flakies. I beg your pardon. I uh, see. I want three hundred dollars worth of flakies, and I ain't in a big hurry. Three hundred dollars worth of flakies. Yeah. What's more, we ain't gonna like them. <laughs> I know it's none of my business, and you forgive me for being nosy, but just why do you want $300 worth of flakies? Well, I'll explain it to you. Uh, you give me $300 worth of flakies, and I ain't gonna like them. And then you give me double back my money, which is $600. And then I pay you $300 for the original flakies that I done bought, and I keep $300 for myself. Simple as ABC. <laughs> Yes, I know this department was created to lend money. And I was appointed to administer the funds. But I am afraid, gentlemen, that I must deny your request. Then you mean that the foreign aid plan refuses to lend my country $300? That's correct. <laughs> then I want to remind you that my country is ready to slap a rebargo on the exports of steel ingots and sympathetic rubber. Gentlemen, that's a chance the United States government will just have to take. <laughs> Folks, this is one of the saddest cases we've ever had on this show. The writer is a Mr. George Stevens, and this is what he has to say. For six long, painful years, I've been suffering from a rare case of jumping pellagra, which has baffled the biggest medical brains in the country. I is the sole support of 12 children ranging from six months to five years. I need about a dozen operations personally. The kids need clothes. We owe eight months rent, and the payments is due on the car. If I could win the $300 jackpot, my troubles would be over. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we want you to meet this very unfortunate but brave man Mr. George Stevens. Well, here we go, Mr. Stevens. You have 30 seconds in which to answer the following question correctly. And if you do so, we'll be more than happy to give you the $300. Yes, sir. Now, you all ready to go? Yes, sir. Now, think carefully. Think real hard. One of the most romantic stories in American history concerns a girl named Priscilla and a man named Captain Miles Standish. Now, according to the story, Miles Standish was too bashful to propose to Priscilla, so he asked a friend to do it for him. Now, for $300, what was the friend's name? Hmm, now let me see. Uh, I know it's on the tip of your tongue. Come on, tell me, say it. Oh, yeah, I remember reading all about the thing in the newspaper. Uh, Mr. Stevens, you have 15 seconds left. You want to take a guess now? Come on, try hard. Oh, Johnny, oh, Johnny, how you can love. Oh, Johnny, oh, Johnny. I got it. I knew you would. Who is it? 
Who is it? Nelson Eddy. <laughs> Now, you have five seconds left. Now, don't you remember when Priscilla said, Speak for yourself, John. John. No, Mr. I guess I better give up. Uh, Mr. Stevens, now, his first name was John. Don't you want to take one last guess? No, I all done. All done? That's right, John. And you say the bill is four thirty-five? Yes, ma'am, Mr. Stevens. I need another quarter. Oh, I know where I can get it. Come with me. This is money we save for a second honeymoon. I guess my husband won't mind if I shake just one quarter out of it. We're gonna open it tonight anyway. Oh, I can get the quarter next week, Miss Stevens. Oh no, no, wait a minute. I'll get it for you. In there. Oh, I guess your husband might have accidentally dropped it in with the regular change. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> it seems to have been quite a few accidents. <laughs> Good heavens. He couldn't have. Uh, I'll see you next week, Miss Stevens. Well, Sapphire, if what you say is true, I'll tell you one thing. The kingfish didn't take that money to have no good time with. Now, he must have used it, you know, to help out in the house, like paying the rent and buying some food. And when you come right down to it, the money was spent for both of you. Where is he now, Amos? Do you know? No, Sapphire, I ain't seen him since yesterday. Well, Amos, this is one thing George will regret as long as he lives. George Stevens, we're going to open that piggy bank, and we're going to do it right now. We were just waiting for you to get here for the ceremony. Uh, now, wait a minute. Oh, wait. Uh, well, we were going to open it after supper. Right now, George. I want an explanation of this. Yes, you better start talking and start talking fast. Uh, start talking fast about what, Mom? George, I want a full explanation. Uh, something wrong? <laughs> but, George, I don't understand it. When I shook the pig before, there was nothing in it but lead washers. Lead washers? Yes, with the little holes in the middle. Uh, honey, you must have been seeing spots before your eyes and run forward right on the side of the coin. You need glasses, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, I'm going to make you another promise right now. What's that, George? Well, I'm going to bring you back here again on our 50th wedding anniversary. Oh, George, you're the most wonderful man in the world. <laughs> Answer the telephone. 
Where's the telephone joint? Well, answer the door, then. It ain't the door. It's the alarm clock. Alarm clock? That's what it is. The reason you didn't recognize it is because you ain't heard it in 15 years. Well, what do you mean, send that thing off this hour today? Scaring a man to death. I'll be so jumpy all day, I won't be able to hold a fool to you. George, I made an appointment for you to see a man about a job. Now, get up. Now, wait a minute, dear. Uh, you can't do that. It's an invasion of privacy. It's unconstitutional. Here's your pain. It's a violation. <laughs> now, get up. And I'm telling you, George Stevens, if you don't take this job, you don't have to bother coming home tonight. Now, you go see Mr. Hanson, the sales manager of this insurance company. I think if there's one thing you can do, it's sell. All right. And here's 20 cents car fare. Make sure you go straight to the insurance company. Well, where do you think I'm going on 20 cents, Honolulu? <laughs> so you see, Mr. Stevens, our hospitalization policy is easy to sell because it is very much in demand. Yeah, sound good, all right. But uh, how much commission do I make? Ten percent. In other words, for every policy you sell for $50, you keep $5, and the company gets the $45. Now, wait a minute here. Let's get this thing straight. If I sell the policy for $50, you get $45, and I don't get but five. That's right. Hmm, you thinking here. Now, if I had my own insurance company, I could keep the whole $50 for myself. Couldn't I, Mr. Hanson? What are you talking about? And if I only sold policies to healthy people who ain't going to have no accidents, that would be 100% profit for me. Just a minute, Mr. Stevens. What are you getting at? <laughs> Mr. Hanson, this is a wonderful country we live living in. I walked in here without a job. And two minutes later, I walk out, president of my own insurance company. <laughs> Good day, sir. <laughs> Say, Gangvich, what's this sign on? I'll be with you in a minute, Andy. Uh, sit down and make yourself comfortable here. Kingfish, what's this multi-million dollar insurance company thing? Oh, just what it's saying, Andy. I done multi myself up a few millionaires. And we've organized the hospitalization insurance company. Uh, wait, I'll tell you more about it just as soon as I finish making out these your claim checks to our uh, policyholder. Let's see the, uh, Mr. Harry Wingrove. Sprain index finger. Eight hundred and sixty-seven dollars. <laughs> Montgomery, $264.82. Uh, what happened to him? Oh, wait, let's see here. Oh, he nicked himself by shaving. <laughs> oh, oh, ain't that an awful lot of money, King Fish? Well, Andy, I know he padded it a little, but we don't check no claims under $1,000. Yeah. Well, King Fish, as long as you're busy, I'll go on out. But wait a minute, Andy. It just occurred to me that you might be interested in taking out one of these hospitalization policies. Mm, no, I can't, please. I wouldn't be interested. But now look, Andy, the Stevens Hospitalization Insurance Company don't coax or use no high-pressure methods to tell anybody. <laughs> now, if a man says that he ain't interested, we respect his word. All I want to know, uh, I'm glad you asked me, Andy. Now, there's some wonderful features about this job policy. You is protected from all accidents even explosion and collision. Yeah, well, what's the difference? You're dead either way, ain't you? Yeah, but that makes a difference in the burial clause. We know what to do with you. Now, in a collision, there you is. But in an explosion, where is you? <laughs> yeah, all right. But the only thing... And that ain't the only feature of this here policy, Andy. <laughs> you hurt my foot. Oh, I'm sorry, Andy. I didn't realize it. Now, Andy, let me give you a typical case. Now, suppose you was up in the Empire State Building, say, way up on the 79th floor. Mm, that's high, all right. And as you were leaning out the window, you looted your balance, and you fall from the 79th floor down, down to the sidewalk. Well, what about it? 
Then my company will pay you $15 a week uh, benefit as long as you live. <laughs> they will, huh? Yeah, yeah, and another nice little feature of this particular accident. The time and the payments don't start from the time you hit the sidewalk. They start from the time that you leave the window. I earn money on the way down, huh? Listen, Kingfish, uh, this sounds like a great policy, but I just ain't interested. I ain't never had no accident in my life. But Andy, suppose you don't have no accident. Suppose you just get sick and need an operation. If you take out one of our policies, uh, we pay all your hospital bills, medicine, and everything. Lightning. Uh, I left Lord Burma over the corner there. I wonder could I get a place to... Yeah, Lightning, come on. Hurry on over there and get it. And then get on out of here. And now, Andy? <laughs> well, how do you like that? The dirty prospect sneaked out on me. Did you tell him that no insurance policy, Mr. Kingsley? No, Lightning. Andy said he ain't sick, he ain't gonna be sick, he ain't gonna have no accidents or nothing. Oh, me. I guess nobody wants to buy hospitalization insurance when they're feeling good. The only time a person wants to buy a policy is when they think they're going to be sick. Hmm, yeah. <laughs> I think you done give me an idea. I did? I must be smarter than I think I am. <laughs> What you gonna do with that, Mr. Kingsley? Lightning, do you remember the large brother who was taking his examination for x-ray technician? Uh, yes, sir. Well, there's an x-ray he took of me when he was just practicing. Is that you, Mr. Kingsley? Yeah, that's me, all right. You look down there, even the initial on my belt buckle come through. Uh, G.S. G.S. You're still. Yes, sir. Lightning. This could be anybody's x-ray. Even Andrew H. Brown. <laughs> ah, any mail for me, Lightning? Uh, no, sir, Mr. Ed. Ain't nothing for you. Oh, uh, well, I tell you, Lightning, I'm glad you dropped in, Andy. <laughs> I tell you, I ain't interested in no hospitalization insurance. Look, Andy, I wouldn't sell you a policy if you obey me. I got more business than I can take care of. And the only reason that I am happy to see you, I want to try out my new x-ray equipment. Uh, x-ray equipment? Yeah, me and my company is doing such a tremendous business that we ain't got time to send the prospects out to be x-rayed. So from now on, I'm going to take them myself. And you just want me to help you test the thing? That's all, Andy. Well, ain't no harm in that, I guess. Well, Andy, come right on over into the X-ray department. <laughs> this the X-ray machine? Yeah, Andy, uh, this is one of the new small types, uh, like they use in the May and I Brothers uh, clinic. Oh. Yeah, now stand right over here, son. Uh, yeah, stand right there. And we try the machine out. Yeah, see how it works here. Sure is dark in there. Uh, Andy, uh, open your mouth so we can get a little more light down there. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks very much, Andy. I'll just run into the dark room and develop the thing. <laughs> it really turned out beautiful, Andy. Uh. 
this the picture you just took? Yeah, and they ought to have been back soon. Only I had to enlarge it. Oh, nothing, nothing at all, Andy. Uh, I think nothing of it. But on second thought, I just tear it up. Forget the whole thing. Hey, Kinky, what's going on here? Andy, I don't know how to say this. But since you is my best friend, there's something i got to tell you. Make the most of the next few months. <laughs> there's something wrong with me. And you is my best friend. And you gotta tell me what it is. All right, Andy. Come over here and sit down on the couch. Let me help you. Hmm, yeah. <laughs> I don't know where to start at. This looks like a nine-car wreck. <laughs> Kingfish, what is this down here at the bottom that looks like a belt buckle? Well, Andy, that's the root of your trouble. And that ain't no belt buckle. That's part of your anatomy. Yeah, but uh, what's that GS for? Oh, the GS. Oh, uh, yeah, that stands for gallstones. <laughs> I never know I had gallstones. I thought you knew it when you had them things. Oh, not all the time, Andy, uh, but tell me this. Do you eat uh, many mashed potatoes? Yeah, I eat a lot of them. Well, that's the reason you didn't know you had the gallstones. The mashed potatoes keep them from rattling. <laughs> Uh, just a good thing uh, that I didn't tell you on them hospitalization policies. You mean I can't get one up now? Oh, no, Andy. I can't do business with anybody as stupid as you is. Listen, Kingfish, you just got to get me one of them policies. Because if I got to go, I want to go with the best of care. I know that, Andy, but... Uh, Please, Kingfish. Well, it's again the company's policy, Andy. But as you is my best friend, I'll kick you in. Now, that'll be $50. Now, let me help you up so you can get to your wallet. Oh. <laughs> Andy, what happened to you in there? Hey, must I was in bad shape. Oh, what's wrong? What's the matter with you? It's a serious thing, Amos. Look at that. My gallstones was in a nine car wreck with some mashed potatoes. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about, Andy. Well, when I saw you this morning, you felt like a million dollars. Yeah, well, that just goes to show how fast a plan can fall apart. I'm going home and wait for the end. Oh, wait a minute, Andy. I don't know what's wrong with you, but if you're as sick as you act, you ought to go see a doctor. I think it's too late, Amos. I feel like they're rigging up my mortars already. Oh, don't be silly, Annie. There's a doctor about four blocks over. Come on, hop in the cab. I'll drive you over there myself. Well, uh, all right, Emma. Help me. Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Brown, I've given you a fairly thorough examination. And frankly, I can't find anything wrong with you. Well, then, Dr. You ain't looked in the right places. Because I is a sick man. Well, I have no explanation for the way you feel. But I admit, there's a peculiar aspect in this case that I want to look into. And on top of that, I do want to make some additional tests. So suppose you come back tomorrow morning and we'll go into this further. If you don't mind, doctor, I'd rather go right to the hospital. Because I need a lot of medical care bad. Well, actually, there's no need of your going to the hospital until we know more about your condition. Look, doctor. I was a bachelor, and I ain't got no one to look after me. And in the hospital, I might have a chance to recover. Well, I guess there's no harm in having a test made there. And furthermore, I'm very much concerned about this high state of nervousness you're in. In fact, it might be a lot more convenient if you did go to the hospital. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, sir. All right, Mr. Brown. Georgie, now you can be real comfortable. Oh, uh, thank you, honey. I uh, thank you. Mm-hmm. Oh, George, I'm so proud of you. 
Yeah, here we are, Andy. Dr. Joseph Wilkins. Uh, is he approved, Kingfish? Yeah, Andy, and you sure picked a good one. Uh, better look at his background here. Academic work taken at USC. Medical course, four years at UCLA. Four years of surgery at CSH. I heard about them other two, but uh, what is CSH? Chicago Slaughterhouse. Oh, oh. You mean I didn't pick myself a doctor instead of the slaughterhouse? Well, now, what's wrong with that? Any doctor that's good enough for the Longhorns ought to be good enough for you. Yeah, maybe you're right about that, all right. Only thing is, Kingfish, I was a little squeamish about having a cow doctor. But Andy, look on the bright side. Now, in case you got hoop or mouth disease, he is the one man that will know how to locate it. Yeah, you're right about that. Yeah, now, getting back to your doctor here. Yeah, and he ain't got nothing to worry about. Yeah, he's an outstanding man. He is, huh? Yeah, he graduated CSH Magna Cum Sorta. Yeah, he was a top man in his class, uh, hacking and sighting. Yeah, well, I'm glad I'm only here for tests and examinations, because it ain't never come to none of that hacking and sighting. Dr. Wilkins gonna be here in about 15 minutes. Yes? Yeah. Oh, Calhoun. Calhoun! Well, if it ain't of all the... Well, look who... What's going on here? Well, I come up to see Andy. He's sick. Now, ain't that a coincidence? I just got a job here in this hospital as orderly. I'm assigned to Dr. Wilkins, and they tell me they got to make some tests in here. Yeah, that's right. They're going to test me. Gee, I'm so glad somebody I know is going to be around. Yeah, I'll be with you all the time. Because they tell me Dr. Wilkins got to make quite a few tests. Mm. <laughs> and going to use the same instrument that he used good old CFH. Oh, doctor. 